Good morning everyone. This is a beautiful morning. Absolutely beautiful. The sun. So <laughs> at night time over here, you watch the moon rise over there, goes all the way around and sets over there. And I can watch that through the window next to where I sleep. It's just beautiful. Uh, so a nice frosty morning. This is what you want, folks. This is what you want. Look at this. This is how I imagine Christmas Day mornings should always be like. If we can't get snow, then at least get a frost like this. Oh, it's beautiful. So anyway, church is back open this, uh, this Sunday morning. 10.30, the service starts, but I would recommend that you get there earlier if you want to be in the church now we we really need people that will uh, go in the back as well and hopefully let people that uh, either don't know the Lord or are brand new Christians to be in the main service just for a time so that they can kind of get to know people etc so if there are people that would like to choose to, to go in that back room for a bit we might not have to but we can only accommodate 30 people in the main room while we're doing this social distancing excuse me <laughs> just <laughs> uh, so if you'd like to do that, that would help out. Uh, but we just, I mean, I, I think most people I've, well, everybody I've spoken to has said they can't wait to get back. I think just to be together, folks, to worship God together in same place, in one accord, that koinonia. I can remember the first service we, we had back in church and there was a lot of people in tears. It was beautiful. So, on a practical level then, same as, same as flu, same as flu, the same thing that we said at the start of this year before this COVID-19, if you've got any kind of symptoms, stay at home, always remember all the people, always remember with this horrible thing that it can be so mild with one person that they might not even know they've got it, with somebody else it can kill them. So and that's the truth it can kill them so always remember if you've got a temperature or if you're losing your smell and you know what the government's saying then please stay at home it'll be on live church i know it's nowhere near as good but we've just got to be be aware of the thing so in the same thing that we would do with flu you have to do with this anyway that's that out of the road let's I've got two, they're not really questions, but just two um, things to look at in this next Zoom meeting and I'm hoping that it's going to encourage you all, maybe even uh, develop a, a bit of banter too. Oh, my hands are freezing. It's freezing this morning. Okay, this is the first thing then. In your Zoom group, By now you should have a feel of people's kind of personalities and so on and giftings in the room. And this is the reason why we're only going to be doing two things because this might take a bit of time. I want you to think about each person in your Zoom group. I want you to think about two attributes, two positive attributes. It could be the character, it could be their gifting, or it could be just something that you you really like about that person that you look at them and you think this part of their makeup really adds to the body to the body so maybe there's eight of you ten of you in the zoom group so it'll take a bit of time because each one of you needs to share two attributes about every other person in the group and we'll go around in a circle those that don't want to do it that's absolutely fine you're not under any obligation but we just want to try and encourage one another 
and understand that this is a body thing. Acts chapter 6 is all about the raising up of the body and Paul's illustration of the body and how it functions in terms of church was absolutely perfect. If you, <clears throat> if you end up with a black toe because you've dropped something on your toe, your entire body knows about it. It's just the way that it is. The body needs the body. The body needs the body. So what we need to do as we go towards a new year is to begin to affirm one another, build one another up, and look at the attributes that people have got that are good and, and edifying for the whole, for the body as a whole. So think of two things of every person in your group, whether it's character or gifting, that in some way or another helps to build up the body as a whole. Okay then, the second thing and the last thing, I want to talk about the call of God. We're going to be looking at this for the next week or two in the Zoom groups, the call of God. Now, these seven that were being raised up had to be full of the Holy Spirit. Did you notice that? Acts chapter 6. They had to be full of the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't just about being full of the Holy Spirit. It was about having a good reputation as well. In other words, when it comes to the call of God, very often um, people think that it's just about gifting. It's not just about gifting. It's also about character. And the apostles said, you choose out from yourselves those that have a good reputation and also uh, a full of the Holy Spirit. That's, those two things are so important. I want to look at the call of God because everybody is called to something. I believe that. Everybody has something that they know deep down they're called to. Now, it can be as simple as being called to be a doorkeeper. Over the years, I've known people that have been excellent doorkeepers. Excellent. And they see it as a, 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 a calling. They really do. They serve. They're there to serve. I've known people over the years that um, are brilliant car park attendants. And, and that's, that might sound to some people like, oh, is that it? But to that person, they really value that calling. I know people that clean out the toilets that actually see that as part of their calling. Not all of their calling, but part of their calling in the body of Christ. And then at the opposite end of the spectrum, I've, I've, I've known people over the years that have been called to be missionaries, to go off and be missionaries worldwide. The call of God is really important. Really, really important. And, and we, we are living in a time now where God needs to raise up people once again for this hour that we're living in. So we're looking at the call of God. Now when it comes to the seven, there were two things that was needed. They needed to have a good reputation and they needed to be full of the Holy Spirit. Very briefly, in my own experience, and everybody's is different, but in my own experience of finding out what the call of God is, it's a, it's a very interesting process that you go through. As a, as a young man, I was saved at the age of 24. My idol in my old life was music. Music. Um, I could sit for hours and listen to LP after LP after LP. And I had a pretty good memory for memorizing lyrics. And to me, that lyrics in my old life was my Bible, really. And um, when I came and became a Christian, I automatically assumed that somehow I was going to be used in music. Even though I wasn't a very good singer, I was a less than an average on a guitar, I just assumed that that was what God had got for me. The longer I went on, the more I realized, not just from people, but from that still small voice inside of me, that that wasn't what the Lord had for me. Now, when I was at school, 
We used to have to do things in front of the class occasionally. It terrified me. And it didn't just terrify me. Whenever it was my turn to do anything like that, I could see other people were embarrassed for me. There was nothing in me that wanted to be at the front at all. And when I got saved, I never thought about anything like preaching or being a pastor or, or anything like that. It never crossed my mind. My pastor used to say to me on a regular basis, when you get your own church, this will happen, that will happen. And I used to say to him, no, that won't happen. I won't get my own church. What happened with me was this. I went on a mission as a very young Christian. I was full of the Holy Spirit. I loved the Lord with all my heart and I went on this mission and on this mission, the first week of this mission were workshops, training workshops. The second part, you were, you were posted somewhere in Europe. I was posted to Germany uh, to do street preaching and so on. But in the first week, you went to workshops. They were trying to find out what people's giftings were. I didn't know what I was, so I ended up going to this preaching pl class because the guy that I'd latched onto was going there. That's the only reason why I went. And in this preaching class, training class, the man said, I want you all to go away tonight and come back tomorrow with a 10 minute gospel message. And he said, you better do it because I'll just pick on people randomly. That night I was so frightened I was so uh, messed up with the idea that he, that he would pick on me, I actually cried or, uh, quite a lot um, because I, did, I hated things like that. But I managed to get a message ready. The next morning, when we got into this, the training class, the man said, don't worry, I won't be picking on anybody, but if the Lord has given you a message, I want you to come forward. Well, I actually had gotten the message, but I was too frightened to go forward. Other people went forward. In the next week, the week where we were to go out onto the streets, our pastor over our group simply said this, I want you to come to me if you want to uh, be the first one to preach. And I just got this sense in my spirit after all the worry that I'd been through, I got this sense in my spirit, go to him. So I went to him and I said, I want to be the first one to preach. And he looked at me and he said, you're only doing that because you want to get it out of the way so you can enjoy the rest of the week, aren't you? And I said, no, I want to be the first one to preach. Well, he said to me, show me what your message is. The only thing I got written down was this. John Lennon once said, how can I move forwards when I don't know which way I'm facing? And underneath that, I'd got John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and that, that was my message. John Lennon once said, how can I move forwards when I don't know which way I'm facing? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he looked at me and he said, that's brilliant. You're preaching. We went out onto the streets and after all the praise and worship was done and the dramas and things, it was time to preach. By that point, there was one person watching. And this person was sitting cross-legged in the middle of the city uh, centre with long hair parted in the middle with little round spectacles on. He was obviously, clearly a massive fan of John Lennon. And the only thing I'd gotten written on this piece of paper was this. John Lennon once said, how can I move forwards when I don't know which way I'm facing? And when I saw that confirmation, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I began to preach. And it was the, just the most incredible feeling I think I've ever had. And I knew, I knew in some way that was what the Lord had called me to do. And then over the years, you get confirmation after confirmation after confirmation that this is your calling in life. 
And that is how it was for me. I certainly did not want to be a preacher. I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't want to run a church, none of that. I wanted to be some kind of a songwriter, but the Lord had other things in mind. It was the baptism of the Holy Spirit that gave me the boldness to do these things. I couldn't do them without that. Now, the reason why I say this is because there will always be confirmation. That's why we began the meeting by going round and, you know, affirming one another, edifying one another, building one another up. There will always be some confirmation. So then, let's get ready for the question. Okay, with all that in mind then, with all that in mind, and with the balance between character and gifting, choose men of good reputation that are full of the Holy Spirit, character and gifting. There comes a point, after a period of serving, which is what we, we, we will see in the, in the weeks, a couple of weeks to come, that the call of God comes upon a person to actually jump into that which God has called them to do. So my question is this. <laughs> it's a hard question maybe for you to answer in front of other people. But what do you think God has called you to do? Now there's, there's kind of three people, uh, three ways of answering that question. The first kind of person, thank God, are few and far between. And, that, and the first kind of person is the deluded person. And they are few and far between, but you do, it does happen. And you'll preach a sermon, very often it's people that haven't been to the church for long. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll preach something like this and they'll come to you. So, not that long ago I had somebody come to me and say, I'm a seer. I'm a seer and um, <clears throat> they practically didn't know the Bible at all the things that they were seeing weren't biblical at all it was very very dangerous but they were totally convinced that they were a seer and you gently try to say to them look you know stick around learn the Bible you know try and learn the scriptures and hopefully as you as you do that you'll you, you'll begin to understand what it is to have a prophetic calling but this person wasn't patient they didn't want to wait around they saw themselves as a seer and practically ended up setting themselves up as a seer you you're always going to get people that are deluded and they won't listen to confirmation they won't listen to the holy spirit they won't listen to the word They've got it in their mind that this is what they're going to be and that's it. Thank God, that kind of person, they are few and far between. But that's the first kind of person. The second kind of person are those that are too humble to kind of say what they believe God is calling them to. And they're, they're, they're just kind of, they just don't want to say. And they, they're kind of so within themselves and sometimes in church, you get people like that that really do have a gifting and they've got the character too but they they just will not uh, ever uh, come out and and say it, what it is that you know they believe god is calling them to and finally the third kind of person is the kind of person that they're not deluded they really have heard from god they really have had that battering in their walk where their character is pretty much matching up with their gifting and they know the time has come they know what their calling is and they're ready to say it <clears throat> I can remember about 18 months ago saying to Mandy and as a as a as a sort of a pastor in a church as a I've always considered myself a young pastor and now I'm not young but you always, I've always felt inferior, you know, and you do. About 18 months ago, I can remember saying to Mandy, I feel like we've come of age. I feel like we have come of age, that this is our time. You know, I'm 52 now. And there comes a point where 
your character, you've had that battering, you've had that humbling, you've, um, you know the word, you know what it is to hear from the Holy Spirit, and you've had confirmation after confirmation, and you are ready to kind of say openly, this is my calling. Effectively, this is what you see in Luke chapter 4 with Jesus, when he, when he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He was effectively saying, this is my calling. So, you're, you're either one of uh, three kinds of people, really. Some are deluded, thank God there are not many. There are those that are way too backwards at coming forwards. And there are those that have got to that point in their life where they really know, this is it, this is what my calling is, and I need to start to step into it. So the, the question is simply this, what do you believe your calling is? What do you believe your calling is? Have a great time, folks, and I'll see you, God willing, on Sunday morning.